After over 20 years of sharing her knowledge on how to live a balanced life while pursuing a spiritual path, Supreme Master Ching Hai continues to dedicate her time and effort to uplift and enhance the life of all beings. In recent years, she has written and published three animal books, The Dogs in My Life, The Birds in My Life, and The Noble Wilds, to introduce humankind to the magical world of animals. Supreme Master Ching Hai shared that the books she wrote are works of love. Motivated by her unconditional love and overflowing compassion for our planet and all of its inhabitants, Supreme Master Ching Hai continues to selflessly accept invitations to share her insights and wisdom on a kinder, nobler, and more loving way of life at gatherings with our association members, symposiums, radio interviews, or via video conference and the like. We now invite you to enjoy part five of a five-part rebroadcast of the video conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai at the premiere of the German and French edition of The Noble Wilds and the Polish edition of The Dogs in My Life at the 61st Frankfurt Book Fair in Germany on October 18, 2009. I've got just two questions here for you two. One is, do you think the Copenhagen Climate Change Conference that is coming up will make it a priority to stop the destruction of the world's tropical forests, which in turn can help climate change? And secondly, in terms of the world being vegan or vegetarian and the importance of such, what do you think will most inspire or encourage people across the country to adopt this important diet in order to avert a global crisis. Yes. Yes, Mr. Kamori, thanks for coming. <laughs> and thanks for sharing with us all this positive uh, change in your great country. Ireland seems to be the first in many things, huh? Yes. Even stop yes. smoking. Yes. In the first in a, in a record of organic farming, <laughs> etc. Huh? You see, it does have an effect. All your effort, yes. And um, just now Mr. Coynan and uh, his wife has reported to us about uh, their success, yeah, Eva, uh, in uh, Gen City. Because right after the Gen City declare Thursday is meat-free day, for example, yeah. Then many other also starting similar meatless programs like Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil and the mayors of many cities like Xinchu of Taiwan, Santiago, uh, Philippines are encouraging uh, their citizens to be veg for the planet. We also have the famous vegetarian celebrities using their fame and name to promote the compassionate way of life. And according to my inner meditative uh, knowledge, uh, we have at least uh, more than 40% of the world population now are vegetarian or vegan. I mean, less cruelty, yes? Mm. Let me think. We have almost 50% or something now. Wow, really? I can't hardly believe it. That's even better. Oh, God, thanks, God, thanks, heaven. Yes. Thanks, Heaven. Yes. That counted also those who are part-time vegetarian, eh? But nevertheless, it's, it's already a very encouraging sign, yeah? Put all together, we have like 50%. My God. Okay. And more and more schools are giving vegetarian and vegan options for lunches, yes? Like in the U.S., since 2003, 40% more schools now offer regular vegetarian meals. That is... Two out of three schools offer regular vegetarian meals. Isn't that a good sign, yeah? That's yeah. great. That is great. But of course, <laughs> of course it's not enough to save the planet, huh? Of course it's not enough. Nevertheless, we continue, okay? We continue and pray. And regarding your question, I also wish that the leaders of uh, the world at Copenhagen will really make it clear this time what is the priority and what is the most 
urgent decision to make and what is really not. So I really pray all the divine power to enlighten them, to wake them up, because we need them to make good decision to save our planet. Truly, the planet also is in their hand. They are that powerful. I hope they do realize the power they possess, and I hope they realize the consequences of not using that power for a noble cause, because that will be a disaster for them in thousands or millions of years to come. Because of the law of, as you saw, so shall you reap, because of the law of cause and retribution, because of the law of karma. You are right, so saving the world's tropical forest, the lungs of the earth, is one of the very important priorities. Because when the tropical rainforests are destroyed, there are many frightening side effects. It's not just the permanent changes to the world's temperature, rainfall, and weather patterns which the forests regulate. It's not just about the millions of people who might lose their livelihoods that depend on the forest. There is more to it than that. There is the extinction of plants and animal species that is hundred times faster than what is natural, and it's, it ruins our ecosystems. And there's also the rainforests themselves. This is important. The rainforests themselves normally is our protectors. But as the climate gets warmer, instead of absorbing CO2 to protect our planet climate, they will be emitting back CO2 as well, and that will be harmful to us. By harming the rainforest, by destroying the planet, by raising animals, we are turning our protector, which is the rainforest, into a harmful agent. They will not be helping us, they will not be helping us, the rainforest, if the climate get warmer. But instead, they will worsen. They will be worsening the global warming problem because they cannot absorb the CO2, but they will release all the CO2 that is already contained in their kingdom. Now, we need to look at the main reason why there is deforestation. Yes, we all know, there is a whole industry behind it in most of the cases, namely the livestock industry. For example, 91% of the Amazon deforested since 1970 was used for what? For grazing pasture, meaning that the number one reason for deforestation of the Amazon, which is the greatest lung of our planet, is to raise cattle. And the second biggest reason also for cattle. They grow the soy to feed the cattle, and of course other animals as well. By the way, yes, NASA reported that once the forest is cleared for pasture or feed crops, the soy itself becomes a large source of emitting carbon. The soy itself even. So not only that, the fires that burn down the trees also release a lot of carbon dioxide, CO2. The Amazon rainforest alone contains more carbon dioxide than 10 years worth of all human-produced greenhouse gases. Plus, when we burn the forest, we release black carbon, which are particles of soot that trap 680 times the heat of the same amount of CO2. Now, blame whom? Don't bother blaming CO2. Yeah. Especially because they are black. You know, these soot from the burnt black uh, rainforest, they hold a lot of heat. According to researchers in Brazil, 60% of the black carbon measure 
at the Antarctic Peninsula came from burning the rainforest in Brazil for livestock raising. So we have to put the blame, the finger on the right spot. Yeah, I hope the Copenhagen leaders understand where to put their finger, not just talking around the subject and try to avoid the burning spot, which is livestock raising, which is animal production. Animals industry are number one killer of all killers on this planet. Forget about the war, forget terrorism. They are just small numbers compared to meat industry. Meat industry is the number one killer, is the number one murderer, and the legal murderer. And we endorse it. We accept it. This is all our wrongdoing, it's all our fault. If the planet is to be gone forever, we cannot blame anything else, anyone else except ourselves. If we don't do anything, at all to change this, see? Okay, furthermore, it's not only the Amazon. Eh? NASA states that uh, the single biggest direct cause of tropical deforestation is livestock grazing land. The livestock sector is the single largest human use of land. We have only 30% of land that cover the earth. The rest is 70% is water. Yes? <laughs> it's ocean. We have only 30% of land. Hmm? And of that precious, 30%, one-third of it is used, not for our true survival, but for livestock pasture or growing tons of grains for animal feed, or to produce a few pieces of meat, and you swallow it in the two seconds. And in that few seconds will bring you tons of sickness, disease, and suffering, sorrow for yourself also. If, even if we don't have compassion for the animals, please do have compassion for ourselves. Do not eat poison and continue to suffer more in the hospital with all kinds of treatment related to it. In fact, we are losing 55 square meters of rainforest for every beef hamburger patty. Every little beef hamburger patty that costs 55 square meters. This is a pity because we have better, more delicious, more nutritious, more healthy and safer alternatives to hamburgers to nourish ourselves anyway. How can we, as very intelligent human beings, do this to ourselves? Not to talk about the cruelty that we committed to animals which degrade us to this level. I am so sorry to have offended you. But I also take responsibility as a human being here on this planet for this, for all the things that I have not known before. For all the things that I am doing with you, I have been doing with you in this respect. So please do forgive me for being straight, honest, and just a fact. Okay? This is not to mention that besides destroying our precious forest, livestock farms also contaminate or even completely kill our water systems. They degrade one's uh, fertile soil, they destroy our biodiversity, and they release vast amounts of extremely dangerous methane and nitrous oxide. And what you call that hydrogen sulfide as well? Yeah? Which are heating up the planet now 100 times, 300 times more than carbon dioxide. So please keep your airplane, keep your car, keep your train, keep your ship, they leave them alone for the time being. Just take out the meat from our diet and stop blaming the CO2 for every problem of global warming on our planet. We are to be blamed. The meat industry is to be blamed. The meat industry 
is the one we have to focus on to stop, to abolish, to stop the climate change, and to stop the waste of the forest and land. Stop talking around the subject. Talk to the point. Meat industry must stop. Apart from destroying our planet, it is destroying our human quality. It is destroying our compassionate nature. It is destroying the spark of God, the part of God that we belong to. We must stop the livestock industry. I hope the leader of the Copenhagen conference will do this. Otherwise, I don't know what else to say anymore. If they won't do this, I don't know what else to say anymore. I really will be speechless. Stop the livestock industry. That would be the most effective way to halt global warming and restore our planet. It would save our precious forests which take decades to grow and create more natural forests that we need to reduce global warming. Without our lungs, we cannot survive. So Prince Charles has lately been highly active about climate change and particularly about protecting the tropical rainforest. He said to the European Parliament, the lives of billions of people depend on your response, and none of us will be forgiven by our children and grandchildren if we falter and fail. I am sorry to say, but I cannot even guarantee that our grandchildren will have a chance to be born to say that. If the Copenhagen climate change Conference leader, don't agree together to stop the meat industry. Talk direct to the subject, not talk around it. It's really that urgent. I pray the world leaders will awaken to this reality immediately and act properly now, even before the Copenhagen meeting in December. I could talk forever, you know, but only the main point is that we must stop the meat industry. That's all there is. European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a Vice President. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. We know that uh, the agriculture and uh, the meat uh, production is one of the main cause of gas emission. And so it's very clear that the ratio per habitant of meat has to decrease. My name is Jan Solm. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please be veg. Go green, save the planet. Your second question that you asked, what will most inspire or encourage people to adopt the vegetarian or vegan diet to avert global crisis? How about <laughs> that we still have our planet? Hmm? <laughs> How about that we still can live here? How about that we don't have sickness again? How about that our children will be healthy, beautiful, intelligent, 
loving and kind. We all wish our children to grow up intelligent, loving and kind. But what do we teach them from beginning of their uh, very fragile life? Huh? What do we teach them? We push the symbol of violence into their mouth. Even if they spit it out, we force to put it back in again until they get used to it. Violence is a part of our life up to now. Violence is what we teach our children and we expect them to be loving and kind. Not only violence, that piece of meat or fish or animals, stuff that we try to stuff into our children, unaware stomach, that also decreases their intelligence, decreases their loving quality, humanity. So we expect our children to be the best and we give them the worst. The worst of all the worst is meat diet. Okay? So, how about <laughs> promise that our children will be what we expect them to be without a meat diet? Huh? Intelligent, loving, and kind, and noble being. See? And how about promise of a repair planet with lush green forests thriving from horizon to horizon, clear rivers, clean stream, healthy living ocean, pure water to drink, without having to put chlorine or any chemical into it to even destroy our health further. How about all that picture of paradise? If we just put down that piece of meat and fish and dairy, whatever the animal piece that we want to put in our mouth. How about clean our system, make it healthy, alive, and not as a graveyard? You know, sometimes if we go through a graveyard, we feel so scared, right? As a kid, I was scared. How about you? Any of you scared when you walk through the cemetery, the graveyard at night, or even daytime? Yes. Yes, okay, okay. Imagine you yourself in the graveyard. Isn't that scary? Scary. Very. <laughs> yeah. And day in, day out, 24 hours a day graveyard you carry with you. And so, okay, we talk more positive like Eva do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We picture, we show them, we invoke the imagination of such a revitalized and calm environment, healthy world. All the inhabitants will live together in peace and harmony. I know we are reciting that since time immemorial, but we have to do it now. We have to realize the harmony and peace, not just talk about it. We will live in peace and harmony as we never did before. Because in a vegan world, we think differently, we act differently, we live differently, we treat each other differently, our mind functions differently, our heart feels differently, our intelligence activated differently. There's no more reason that we can see for animals to fear humans. There's no more reason to make anyone suffer. For animals and humans alike, yeah? We will see no reason. We will see only reason to love, to protect, and help each other. And no more grounds for humans to fear one another because everyone will honor life and protect both theirs and others' life simply by being vegan. Your life will change. Your thinking will change. The whole being will change. Believe me, I know it because I've done it. You will change completely. You will love yourself more. You will have more self-respect and you'll be glad that you walk the noble way of compassionate vegan diet. Without this deep-seated fear for one another or from the animal, there will be only love, peace, both with animals and humans. 
the wise sages and thinkers like Pythagoras said, "For as long as men massacre animals, they will kill each other." And Leo Tolstoy, the famous Russian author that every one of us know, also said, "As long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields." It is like that, truly like that. In the USA, for example, the FBI. You know, Federal Bureau of Intelligence, the famous FBI of America. Yes, they officially considers animal cruelty as part of how much a criminal is a threat to society. Many serial killers in their childhood tortured and abused animals. They practice this first on the animals, and later on humans. You see, and so the opposite will be true. Yes, if we are kind and loving to animals, we will also be even more kind, more loving to our human companion or. Humans are、uh, co-inhabitants. Without slaughterhouses, we won't participate in the habit of killing, or even having the subconscious participation of the habit of killing, the habit of oppressing the weak and the defenseless and innocent just for our palate. It is really below our dignity. Our minds won't be in conflict so much between our wish to be compassionate, to be loving and peaceful, and our behavior that speaks louder than our words. The opposite. And further, with no weapons, no armies for battles, only time and energy, and the financial power remaining for constructive works to better our society. Imagine what a society that would be. Of course, it's a heaven on earth. We will have the means and the fearless heart to solve poverty and hunger, which themselves are in many ways a product of meat eating. We will live in beauty and health and so much joy. The whole atmosphere will be brimming with happiness, like a real paradise. If we become vegan, such a simple, easy step, we don't just win our beautiful planet back. We stand to gain an even more beautiful, wonderful, elevated world. Because the vegan lifestyle carries such a powerful energy, all positive, all loving, all constructive, all blessing, all intelligence. That could melt all the negative energy away, destroy it forever, and neutralize the destructive forces in our environment and in our lives in the shortest time that you could imagine, and then replace them with constructive energy and peaceful vibrations. It will be just like the difference between walking into a slaughterhouse. And into a vegan cafe, which you could try yourself to compare the atmosphere and the feeling. You will see what I mean. Actually, there is also very strong motivation for people to be vegan when they see the animal cruelty that occurs with their own eyes, the horrors that take place behind the factory farm. Behind the walls of the massacre house door, I don't call it slaughter house. I call it massacre house. Behind the door of those massacre house, there's a horrifying action going on. Or if they go on the massacring fishing boat, or the bloody whaling boat, to witness it for themselves, I wonder how anybody could ever do this for a living. But of course, they have been cheated into doing that. We have all been cheated into doing the things that we should have never done, should have never even imagined, because our heart are originally full of compassion and love, but we we just ignore our feeling.
if you ever wonder if hell exists, just go into those massacre house or the boat that kills the whales and go to the seals massacring areas. Go there to find hell. Then you believe that hell will exist. Our original God nature is compassion and love. I repeat again and again and again. You are not that. You are compassion. You are love incarnate. Please return to it. So when we force ourselves to watch the videos of animal cruelty, which, by the way, are purposefully hidden from us for a reason, eh? so that we don't know, huh? We flinch when we watch these cruelty, even on video, or even when we heard report about it, just like before we heard one of our brother report about the cruelty everywhere. We, we flinch, we cring, we look away, we cry, or we scream. We have nightmare. We cannot bear to see the cow, the pig, the chicken's throat puncture or slit, so they bleed to death. And more the more and more gruesome, unimaginable way of torturing animals. Or the forced fat of a four grass goose. Or purposeful underfeeding of a baby veal calf. Or con- confining him so that he, he has to keep his tender meat. That he could not even move his body for the rest of his tender short life. Or the gruesome fate of baby chickens where the females have their tender beaks cut off while hanging upside down and males are grind alive or suffocated to death. Or the non-stop misery or panic of the pigs who are so intelligent and loving and clean. Yet forced to stand knee-deep in their own filth and choking on their own toxic fumes of their own waste and screaming out of madness. Or the sheep with the broken bones from being transported thousands of miles to massacre house. We look away because it's not our nature to want to be hurt, nor it is our nature to inflict pain and agony or sheer terror on others. Health is also another very strong motivator that we can show other people to encourage them and inspire them. In a vegan world, there would be no more sad news about someone's child dying or brain damage or paralysis due to E. coli. The deadly bacteria, which originally almost always comes from farmed animals, There would be no more heartache due to deadly swine flu pandemic or mad cow disease, cancer, diabetes, strokes and heart attacks, salmonella, Ebola, etc., etc. Even AIDS that we fear so much is originally also from hunting animals to eat. Animal diseases from the horrid, filthy livestock raising environment are responsible for 75% of all the emerging infectious human diseases. And they are often contracted by us hunting after the animals or forcing them to stay in a crowded, filthy place to be massacred for us to eat. This is not the way God intended for us to live with our co-inhabitants. This is not the way we should behave as children of God. We have been really deluded into doing all this and degrading ourselves thus and to this level. The animals are our helpers, our friends, and heaven's beloved. I hope whatever most motivates us, we change and quick. We are running out of time anyway. If we wait too long, I'm afraid we won't be left with a choice if we want ourselves and our children to survive. Now we still have a choice. But if we wait too long, I'm sorry, maybe no more choice. Thank you, Mr. Kamori. Um, I know I talk a lot, but I can never talk enough. Yes. Thank you, Supreme Master, and thank you for all that you do. Thanks.
Thank you for being such a caring animal activist. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra. Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth, there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves, which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health 
and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Thank you, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for your enlightening response to many interesting questions. And thank you, our special VIP guests, for making this question and answer session such a special occasion. It has been a fascinating seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And very emotional one, huh? Very heart-wrenching also, some part. Yes, yes, indeed. Truly. Supreme Master, before we conclude today, we would like to present you with a delicious vegan cake to celebrate oh. this auspicious and most enlightening event. Sure, sure. They give me a knife here. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Very good idea. Very good idea that we should show people to use a knife just to cut vegan cake. <laughs> Very good idea. Wonderful. Okay, I'm ready. Shall we do it now? <laughs> okay. Wow, yum, yum, yum. Delicious, delicious. You've been working hard and getting up early, hey? <laughs> okay, now? All right. One, two, three. Yes. Very good. Okay, good appetite. <laughs> ah, I wish I am there, huh? <laughs> it looks so delicious. Thank you so much, Master, for your time. Thanks to we, you. And we appreciate your presence with us today. And we sincerely wish you the greatest success in spreading love and compassion for a glorious future around the planet. Thank you. May your newly released book serve to contribute to this success. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen and viewers around the globe, Thank you for sharing in this magnificent evening. Remember to spread the message to be vegan to save the planet. Be veg, be go green, green save, and the save the planet. As one world together, we can make it. Heaven's blessing and love with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, the organizer. Thanks to the Frankfurt uh, Book Fair organizer that allowing us to uh, have this meeting today. And thanks to all the speakers and all the distinguished audience. Thank you all. And I wish you the best in this noble endeavor. Please help us. We help each other to save the planet and to save our children and save the animals. Thank you ever so much. Bless you all. God bless you all. to hear the stories of Supreme Master Ching Hai and how she feels about, you know, climate change and the destruction of the world's rainforests and everything that is happening to animals today too. So I was really excited to, to be here and just to even listen to what she had to say about the problems facing the planet today and just to see, you know, what people around the world are doing to help, you know, reverse climate change, you know, be vegetarian, be vegan and the work we're all doing to, to educate people um, to make a difference and to reverse the cycle of cruelty to animals and climate change. The book was really exciting actually, um, lots of really nice pictures of you know, animals, um, their mam mammies, daddies and their babies, um, 
chickens, pigs, nearly every animal you can possibly think of is in the book. Um, I've read through all of her stories um, and they're very touching stories as well and I think she sends a very important message throughout the book that even though animals look different than us, they're no more different You know, when they're capable of experiencing fear, pain, suffering, loneliness, anger, joy. There's a very strong message in there that you know animals just like us have feelings too. Hi, I'm John Carmody of the Animal Rights Action Network. Be veg, be green and save the planet. Hello, Jovanka, could you please tell us about your impressions about this conference? Um, I was really, really surprised and really impressed. It was really well organized and really heartfelt and uh, I cried. I didn't expect to see Supreme Master cry. She did, I did, everyone did, but it was beautiful and I think everybody here learned a little bit. It also gave at least everyone in this room and maybe millions of people watching a real feeling of there's something going on and we can make it work and it's positive. My message for the people around the world is that, um, well, you are what you eat and if there's a way to eat and be kind, why not do it? It's better for the environment to eat vegetarian, it's better in every possible way. Lower risk of heart disease, lower risk of cancer, everything, everything. Hi, I'm Javonka Steele from Ghent in Belgium. Be veg, go green, save the planet. Thanks for your happy company for today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Golden Age Technology. Coming up next after Noteworthy News. May heavens bless you and your loved ones with much love and abundance. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.